Always. We ask the questions. What is needed in the world? Profesor na Ekonomskom fakultetu u Ljubljani i političar Jože Damjan za Al Jazeera govori o ekonomskim i geopolitičkim posjedicama rata u Ukrajini, energetskoj krizi, inflaciji i odgovoru Evropske unije. Nekada nezavisni ministar u vladi Janeza Janše pojašnjava zašto je odstupio sa pozicije i postao jedan od najvećih kritičara aktuelnog slovenskog premijera te prognozira ishod predstojećih izbora u toj državi. Mr. Damjan, welcome to the Al Jazeera's program. Thank you very much for your invitation. As we are speaking now, uh, there is an ongoing crisis in Europe, uh, the war in Ukraine. Uh, what will be its impact on European Union, Slovenia and the countries of this region? Mm. Uh, this. Uh, Say unhappy events in Ukraine will have a very big impact actually on uh, most of the region. So, f first of all, of course, the, the people of Ukraine and Russia because of the sanctions. But on the other side, you know, among the countries uh, that will be most uh, affected by that will be uh, especially the uh, countries of the European Union, its citizens, and the economy. Uh, the problem is that actually, you know, the U.S. Uh, will be not affected by that because they have their own, uh, uh, let's say, uh, uh, supply of, of uh, energy resources and so on. And also the impact on the economy will, will be not that big. But in this region, uh, which is very much dependent on the imports of the gas and oil from Russia and also from the coal, like in Germany, you know, the dependence is like 30 percent. Uh, this there will be a very big impact and in terms of the energy prices, then in, in terms of the supply of, of energy and of food. Uh, and of course, th this might have an impact on the stagnation in, in Europe uh, over the, this year and, 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 and the next years. And uh, if, you, uh, if you add here the inflation, so the, 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 the surge in, in prices of energy prices, food prices, and, and the, the raw materials prices, then we get a kind of a toxic combination of inflation plus stagnation, which leads to the uh, st uh, stagflation, uh, something similar to what happened in the 1970s. And the region of Western Balkans? Uh, so the whole region uh, in Western Balkans, uh, I mean, it's not that much uh, affected by that because they are less uh, dependent on the exports. To, 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 so this second order effect uh, uh, through exports will be not that big in, in the Western Balkans. Uh, and uh, they are also less dependent, uh, I would say, on, on the imports of uh, energy uh, from uh, Russia. Uh, and this might have a, a bit lower impact uh, on, on the, the whole region of Western Balkans. Yeah. Um, how powerful are the sanctions uh, which uh, Western countries uh, imposed to Russia? Mm. Uh, and how, for how long Russian economy uh, can absorb that kind of pressure? So the sanctions that were imposed against Russia are the, probably the most powerful so far. Uh, maybe it's very similar to, the, uh, to what happened to Iran since 1979. Uh, very similar uh, sanctions, uh, like you know, sanctions against the central banks, uh, monetary reserves, and so on. This is very similar uh, as in Iran. Uh, so uh, Russia will be affected by that uh, in, in the sense, uh, like in two ways. Uh, first way is the you know uh, there is uh, no restricted imports from Russia uh, from uh, all the goods except energy. Uh, on, so this will affect uh, the, the Russian economy. On the other side, uh, Russian uh, uh, central banks cannot control anymore the, the exchange rate of uh, ruble. Uh, so this might also uh, have, have an effect. But of course, you know, uh, uh, Russia can uh, kind of uh, kind of escape this right by cooperating more with China, and then also you now this uh, move by by, by Putin, uh, which. Uh, uh, actually required from all importers of, ga of Russian gas and oil, you know, to be paid in rubles. Uh, yeah. This has also have a stabilizing effect on, on the exchange rate of uh, ruble. Uh, so, uh, um, on the other side, you know, I, I, don't, I don't think there is a big problem in the short run here uh, for Russia because uh, Russia can uh, uh, can uh, finance this war for a very long time because you know. Um, only with its exports of oil and gas, you know, uh, Russia, uh, Russia gets uh, one billion uh, euro per day 
So basically, the money, the, there is a plenty of money to finance this war. So this will not not be a problem. But the problem will be in the long, long run. So if the, this crisis will uh, will prolong for a longer time, right? And if the sanctions will will stay there, uh, then of course. Uh, uh, the Russian citizens, they will be most affected by that because we will get a stagnation uh, in Russia, recession, and then, of course, uh, the people will suffer because of unemployment, uh, the incomes will go down, and also if the, the exchange rate uh, will be affected for the long run, then, then also the purchasing power of, of their wages of the Russian people will be decreased. And we might get a similar effect as we, uh, we've seen in Serbia, right, uh, which was affected by, by, by the sanctions by uh, Western countries. Uh, that in, 15 years ago, right? Uh, uh, and this might have a very long run uh, negative impact on, on the economy uh, and the perspectives of people. And this is the, what I'm most worried about, right? Because people of Russia, they are, they are, not, uh, they are not guilty for, for, for this crisis, but they will, they will pay the highest price for that. Um, when we speak about risks uh, in Europe, apart from this warfare, uh, we have a possibility of a full-scale energy crisis. Uh, how is it possible that European Union uh, didn't find a way, uh, an alternative to, uh, to Russia in this matter? Uh, even as we know, there were many explorations of gas and, and oil and, and even announcements of uh, new projects in that field. The problem is basically, uh, basically in Germany. Right? Germany has pursued, uh, I would say, uh, wrong uh, or suicidal energy policy since two decades. Right? So because uh, they moved towards uh, renewable energy sources, right, like solar and, and wind power and biomass, uh, biomass. Uh, and on the other side, they they, they started to, to 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 close the nuclear powers and. Of course, what happened afterwards, right? Uh, they, they were closing the nuclear powers, right? They, they, they have to uh, basically resort to, to the imports of gas in order to, uh, to, to, to compensate for, for, for the lost power that was generated by, by, by the nuclear power stations, right? And so in that two, uh, two, two decades, actually, the dependence of Germany, right, on, let's say, dirty energy sources, right, and on Russia has increased tremendously. Basically, this is this was the problem uh, in Germany. Yeah, the Germany actually pursued this policy, and also uh, uh, all the European Union countries actually followed that, that that policy. And this was the biggest mistake. Now, you know, you know Germany is dependent like 30 percent on, on uh, imports of uh, gas and oil from Russia, uh, and of course there is no autonomy anymore. So. Due, due to this uh, wrong policy, uh, so energy policy, actually Germany lost its, uh, its uh, let's say, uh, autonomy in external policies, and also other countries, right? No, they they have they have no much choice, right? So because it's impossible in the short run or either, even in the medium term, right, to decrease the this uh, uh, dependence on, on, on imports from. Uh, uh, Russia of en energy resources because you know this would require basically that uh, Germany uh, would build new uh, uh, pipelines uh, for gas right from from the south of countries in order to get like like the gas from Libya uh, or so which will take like at least five years then in in, in terms of uh, other supplies right uh, Germany should uh, build then the energy uh, terminals, right, in order to, to import uh, the gas uh, through, through, through the tankers and so on. Uh, but this will also take, take a lot of time. So basically there is no short-run short, uh, short uh, run, uh, uh, solution to, to, to this problem. And, uh, but this is an opportunity now for everyone, actually, you know, to stop this, this madness, right, with, the, with the, this wrong energy policies, right, which was based on uh, closing the most reliable plants, right, in terms of nuclear power, right? And Slovenia was, was lucky with that, right? We have this no nuclear power in Slovenia, and we are kind of independent of that. We are less uh, affected by, 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 by the external shocks like this one uh, with Russia or Ukraine. And also the, uh, Germany should rethink its policy, and the whole European Union should rethink that, right? Uh, but, of course, it will take like five years at least in order to, 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 to find a, 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 let's say, sustainable solution here. Uh, before the pandemic, European Union had a problem with deflation, uh, which uh, was hurting many industries. Uh, now, when uh, inflation is raging, uh, we've uh, never seen or we didn't see these levels of inflation 
uh, uh, last few decades. Uh, what is the solution? Uh, when do you expect uh, normalization uh, uh, on the markets and uh, how to uh, survive uh, this period? Uh, so this surge in inflation uh, from the past year, actually, it was uh, kind of, you know, there, there are many reasons for that. So one of the reasons was that after the reopening, right, economic reopening uh, after the COVID, actually, you know, the people, they wanted to, you know, to spend more, basically. And, uh, of course, there, there was an increased demand for, 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 for many things, and uh, for which the inputs, the major inputs are coming from, 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 from Asia, right? Uh, because Western countries, they were, they were de-industrialized, de you know, uh, over the last three decades, and so so we are dependent on, on Asia, right? And they, they, this is one of the problem because of the shortages in, in, in the uh, supply uh, chains, in the global supply chains, right? Uh, on, on the other side, there, there, were, there was also increased demand for ener energy resources, which also uh, drove the, 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 the prices to, to, to increase. Uh, and now we have the, the Ukrainian shock uh, um, on, coming on top of that, right? Uh, so uh, how to stop that? So the, the, this, this is the, the main challenge of, for, for the uh, policymakers, right? We, ha we have uh, uh, two solutions. So we have a, what I would call an apparm solution, right? This is, this is what uh, Paul Fork in the US did in 1979, right? So the central banks could uh, increase the rates, like Fork did, to 20%, right? And this would kill the economy, probably. Yeah? We, we would get into a recession, and then in a few years, the, the, the inflation rate would uh, come down, and the unemployment would, would, would also start uh, to, to, to decrease, right? But in the U.S., it, it lasted for eight years, right? This is a no palm solution, right? Because you kill everything, right? But the second solution, which, which is uh, more sustainable, is actually that the, the, the countries, so the governments here uh, intervene in the sense that they uh, try to compensate for increased prices, right? So they reduce the taxes on, on energy resources, so they, they reduce the burden uh, for the companies and for the people, right? So basically, uh, the companies will not increase the prices of, of, of products, and the, peop uh, and the people, right, the, the trade unions, they will not require higher wages. So we don't get into the, the, the inflation uh, spiral, right? This is very important. On the other side, countries have, can, uh, so through the European Union, they could negotiate with the Asian companies like the producers of chips, right? To increase the capacity and, and, and also they, they can affect uh, the, uh, the, the uh, logistic uh, parts of that, right? Because we have uh, no problems of the jams in, in, the, in the ports of, of major uh, European countries and also in the US, right? Because of the mismatch there. And, uh, so what we, we could do here is actually that the European Union kind of coordinates different ports in different countries. How do we get uh, uh, faster access to, 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 the, to, the, to the ships with, with the containers, right, that are uh, bringing the, the, the inputs from, from Asia? But then this is the sh uh, short-term solution, right? Uh, and uh, in, in this way, uh, we, could, uh, we could actually um, decrease or reduce the, the, uh, the, the uh, pressure of, of high inflation. And so basically, uh, we don't get into this last resort solution by, by the central banks, right? Uh, with this napalm solution, which, uh, which uh, I, I would call. And I hope, actually, uh, that the central banks will uh, remain calm, right? Uh, very cautious on that and that the countries will intervene in, in this way, so we avoid the stagflation. Almost uh, 10 years ago, uh, Slovenia, uh, surprisingly for many, uh, avoided bankruptcy. Uh, one of the main problems then uh, were the uh, banks, the banking sector. How stable is it now? Actually, the problem is like, uh, 15 years ago, right? After the financial crisis of 2008 was actually that too many Slovenian companies take too much uh, uh, loans, right? There was ex excessive indebtedness to Slovenian companies, which then slowly uh, uh, slowly transferred in into the bad balance sheets uh, of the banks. And the Slovenian government was too slow, right, in uh, reacting to that because it needed like five years to rehabilitate the banks, right? And this almost drove Slovenia to, to, to the bankruptcy. Now the situation is much better because the Slovenian companies deleveraged uh, over the last year. So basically they have a, a very clean balance sheets uh, and they have a, a lot of money uh, in terms of deposits on, on the banks. So they are pretty much uh, uh, much stable. And uh, actually uh, I don't see any big risk uh, actually for, for, for the Slovenian uh, corporate sector and the financial sectors in, in, in this period because now we really have a stable system. Uh, what do you think about current uh, government's approach to the pandemic crisis uh, here in uh, Slovenia? 
in the context of uh, keeping uh, the businesses afloat and uh, protecting uh, the living uh, standard of the citizens. The Slovenian government actually, actually produced very similar policies than other European countries. It was, uh, in some sense, even uh, more expensive. So its fiscal policy was even more expensive. We were supporting uh, people, right, through 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 a basic income and uh, also the companies, right, through reducing the, their their cost uh, or keeping the wage, paying for the wages for the companies, even in a bigger extent than European countries. And this uh, uh, this approach is good, actually. Uh, in this way, Slovenia was able. So the Slovenian government was able to uh, compensate for, for the negative shock of COVID uh, already in the second half of the, uh, of the last year. While uh, most of the other European countries, right, they, 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 uh, they, they were able to compensate for that uh, only at the end of, of the last year. So this policy was not bad, but of course, right, uh, uh, so it was a good policy, right, it was a very, uh, very, very efficient policy. But of course, in this way, uh, Slovenian government has uh, increased uh, debts, uh, so the, the, uh, the deficit of, of, of the uh, budget, uh, which will have to be repaid in the, in the future. And the biggest risk I see here is actually, you know, uh, is in the changing uh, uh, fiscal rules of the European Union, right? If the next year, so the uh, uh, Euro Europe will, will uh, um, introduce or uh, the, 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 the previous uh, fiscal rule, right? So that that's, uh, the governments have to consolidate its it budgets, right, in two years, then Slovenia will have a kind of a big problem, bigger problem than, 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 than Germany, right? Because we will have to reduce the, the debt uh, very soon, which will have then negative impact on, on the economy. And of course, the economic growth will slow. And this is the biggest risk. But I hope, right, the, the European Union, to the uh, uh, talks uh, we had with them, uh, will have a more cautious approach here. Uh, because they still uh, they, 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 they still remember right the mistake they make uh, made back uh, back in 2010 2012 when they required you know, very uh, fast fiscal consolidations of, of other countries which had then a negative impact on on uh, double deep recession in Europe is Slovenia uh, an attractive destination for doing business we saw some uh, uh, interesting moves in the recent years, like uh, Chinese takeover of Gorenia. Uh, so, uh, what is the uh, volume and overall uh, structure of foreign investments in Slovenia? So, it depends whom you ask, right? So, for the Slovenian companies, of course, the business environment is bad, right? They, 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 they would say that, but the, there is too much administration, the wages are too high. Right, but the foreign companies, right? They they see it uh, differently because Slovenia was uh, uh, kind of involved uh, in in uh, uh, in this uh, uh, value chains of the European companies for let's say a few decades, right? Since uh, since 1990, and of course we have the, this very strong relationship with with the, with the foreign multinational uh, companies. Uh, we produce uh, we produce uh, uh, inputs for them, and uh, basically you know there is a there there is a very stable environment here in this sense you know right? and also if you compare slovenian wages to wages in other countries in, in like in austria and so on you will see the wages are like only half of that right uh, so in that sense slovenia is still a very attractive uh, very attractive uh, uh, location for foreign companies uh, which wants uh, actually to, to, to expand in, in, in Slovenia and this has uh, also shown in uh, the increased uh, foreign uh, direct investment in Slovenia over, over the last decade so uh, this is actually a worry of many of the Slovenians right because we are kind of selling off you know they are or, or jewels let's say right? like like Gorenia and other companies as you see you know uh, Many Slovenian companies, like, like, like Fructal or, or, or so on, right? They, they were sold even to, to, to the companies from Serbia and so on, uh, and then Droga Kolinska, which was sold to, to, to the Atlantic Group and so on. And may, many Slovenians just see this like, uh, you know, uh, they are hurt by that, right? In the sense, you know, it's sentimental uh, about it. But I see this uh, as, a, as a very good thing in, in the sense that uh, uh, this creates this cooperation within the region. Uh, and uh, this helps, of course, the Slovenian people, right? We, we have, uh, Slovenian people have jobs in, in these companies. So the more investment we have, the more jobs for the Slovenian. And this, uh, these jobs are better paid than uh, jobs in, in the purely domestically owned companies, like, like by 15 to 20 percent. So actually, it's a, a, a positive uh, impact on the Slovenian economy. Yeah, uh, Slovenia is one of the EU countries uh, in constant search for workers. Uh, until now, um, 
uh, that problem was solved by workers from Balkan countries. Uh, but many of those workers now are going, are, are looking uh, to go to other bigger uh, markets, uh, like German market, for, the, for instance. Uh, do you see problem there? Sure, because we are in a similar position in uh, other uh, Western European countries, like Sweden or other countries, you know, uh, we're actually domestic, even Austria, right? Because domestic workers, they don't want to work si certain jobs, like, you know, they want, don't want to work in construction sector, for example, right? Mm -hmm. The wages are low, you know, minimum wages and so on. And uh, we kind of, uh, as you mentioned, uh, we kind of solved so far the problem by importing workers from, from the uh, Western ba Balkan region. And now, actually, as last year uh, has shown, actually, they, 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 we are in short supply of them. And, and Slovenia will have a problem with that. With, I, I don't know how to solve it in the short run because, you know, uh, other countries uh, in, in the, in the, in the, in the uh, other surrounding countries, uh, actually, they have uh, higher wages, and I, I don't see the, the better, better, better solution for that. Uh, so basically, even either we will uh, kind of uh, have to reduce uh, uh, reduce the activity in certain sectors, like, uh, or, or we will we will have to kind of uh, I don't know. We, we don't have a solution for that, basically, right? So, um, how do you see? Uh, economies uh, of non-EU uh, 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 countries uh, from the region. Uh, we saw some initiatives like Open Balkan, but uh, at the same time we saw, we saw uh, some political crisis which, which took heavy turns in countries like Bosnia and Herzegovina or uh, Montenegro. Uh, what are your thoughts on that? Actually, I did a study on that. So, on the open Balkans for 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 the uh, for for the uh, for Macedonia, and I see actually that these countries, right, in, in the region, they have a big opportunity here, right. So, because of, what what I would see as also an opportunity for the European Union is Union is that those countries kind of uh, create a block, trading block, right, here, and then the whole block could be then. Uh, could then uh, join the, the European Union. I don't see much possibility for those countries to, to join EU, you know, separately. Uh, so they, 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 they will be merged with the European Union only as a bloc. And this is a big opportunity, basically, because we create free trade with, with the region, and so with the European Union, but also free, uh, free trade between those countries, right? So th there will be more cooperation between these countries. This will increase the, 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 the business opportunities for, for all of the countries in, uh, in the region. And I see this is a, a very big opportunity for the region uh, and for the European Union as well. Can you see a clear uh, EU perspective uh, for the region of Western Balkans when you consider uh, the growing uh, anti-enlargement sentiment in a few very important countries in the European Union? Sure, I don't see any other option actually, right? Because the uh, European Union cannot afford to have a, uh, to have a, a very large trade bloc within the European Union that is outside of the European Union. Because it's beneficial for the European Union that those countries join the EU because we have now a bigger market, uh, we have our more political stability there, and also uh, through the policies of the European Union, right, through these uh, fiscal transfers, uh, actually, uh, European Union could help those countries to, to grow even faster, to converge to, to the European Union, and so we create a really big block, a stable block, a, a block of, uh, say, richer countries, and this is the only option for the European Union, uh, and I think that the countries, certain countries of the European Union, they, they have to rethink their policies, their stance towards uh, the enlargement, right, and uh, see that this is the, actually the only option for the European, uh, for the Europe uh, uh, as a well. whole. Uh, you are politically active, so I have to ask you. Uh, you're one of the biggest uh, critics of Yanis Janc, but once uh, you were a member uh, of his government. Uh, what changed since then? No, actually, I was independent uh, as a minister in the in the uh, Janša's government that was back in in 2006, and uh, of course, uh, after I saw his true agenda, right, which can do uh, also be seen here, uh, I stepped on very very quickly, right. And Janša is a uh, basically a populist with his own agenda. He has his own, uh, let's say, psychological problems, right, in in a sense, uh, and. Uh, 
it's very difficult to cooperate with him because he, he, he wants to be a, a dominant one, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, pursuing his, his own agenda in similar to Putin or, or Orban. And it's very di difficult to cooperate him as an independent as, or independently thinking uh, person, right? Uh, also, he has many problems also with the, with the other uh, political parties here, right? He, he cannot find very much partners actually for his policies because he tries to be too populist, too, too dominant. And I don't. I think his time is, is over now, right? So in the, in the elections, uh, which will be in, in three weeks, actually, I see uh, uh, a clear victory for the position and a decline of Yanis Yansha, and probably he will never, never return uh, back to, to, to power. Let's hope. Mr. Damian, thank you very much for your time. Thank you very much for your invitation.